Join me on a journey as we discover soda ash from the ground up. My name is Selena Downs. In this series, I'll be exploring a white, granular substance that's been with us for more than 5,000 years, yet most of us know very little about. It's used to clean our air and soften our water and even helps to sweeten our drinks. It's used to manufacture the glass in our buildings and the bottles we drink from, as well as keeping our houses clean and animals fed. This chemical is also playing a key role in the new wave of mobility. It's used in the batteries that power today's electric vehicles like this one. It's also being used to minimise air pollution from our global shipping industry by drastically reducing sulphur emissions. This is a story of manufacturing prowess on a global scale. This is the story of sodium carbonate, known as soda ash. But what exactly is it and where does it come from? To find out more, I've come to the British Geological Survey based in Nottingham, here in the heart of the UK. I'm surrounded by some 200,000 rock specimens and four and a half million fossils. And I'm off to meet Andrew Bloodworth, the science director. So, Andrew, what is soda ash? Soda ash, chemically, it's sodium carbonate. It's derived from a mineral called trona. It's used in all sorts of things that we use every day, everything from glass to detergent to pharmaceuticals to food. It underpins our modern economy. The ancient Egyptians were the first people to use soda ash, and they found deposits of trona out in the desert, and they used that for making glass, like we do, but they also used it for preserving mummies. Some ancient civilizations made it from plant ash, so certain plants that grow particularly in salty areas like marshes, if you burn them, the ash is quite sodium rich and hence the term soda ash. It's produced today in two ways. One is through a chemical process and the product that comes out of that is like synthetic soda ash. And the other is by mining a trona. Let's explore further the story of natural soda ash. To find out more about how it is produced, I'm crossing the Atlantic to the big plains of Wyoming in the US. Because as well as its famed Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming has a hidden secret underneath these plains. It is here, deep within the Green River Basin, where the crystal structure of Trona can be found in layered evaporate deposits underground. Some 800 feet beneath me lie these vast natural deposits that were formed some 66 million years ago. It's the reason Wyoming is called the soda ash capital of the world. I want to get a closer look, so I'm meeting with mine manager Wendy Straub to find out about conventional mining in Wyoming. Well, we just descended down our service hoist about 850 feet. This area is the oldest area in the mine. It was constructed in 1962 with conventional drill blast. So the miners would have drilled out the round, they would have used a cutting machine around the perimeter and loaded it with explosives and then blasted it out. And how far does it stretch? So in its entirety, if you were to go east and west, it's approximately five miles. And north and south, it's approximately 10 miles. And why do you find Trona so interesting? It takes a lot of different people to do the planning and the execution to actually produce the trona and get it onto the surface. So I, I think that it's, it's really good to see from front to back the entire process. It fascinates me. For the past four years, this mine has been run by Jinnah. It produces two and a half million tons of soda ash each year. I'm off to meet with CEO and President Ozerkan to find out more. Well, there are not many natural soda ash resources around the world. This location we're sitting on, actually the 90% of the world resource is located here. This is a 2.5 million metric ton production facility with great ambition with growth. Also, 2025, we are adding 5 million tons of soda ash production about 40 miles south of where we're located today with two new facilities. So how long will, will the Trona last? There is over 100 years of worth of resources available on that new project without considering any expansion around it. Wow. I think responsible mining and utilizing the resource effectively is the key. 
Tell me about your workforce and the people you employ. We have the most productive workforce um, over in the Toronto industry in Green River. We have 444 employees located right here in this location. And we have 44 additional over at the headquarters. We just become a huge family here and we're continuing to grow. it. So where does all this talent come from and what goes into training our future engineers? I come to the University of Wyoming, which specializes in engineering. I don't believe in gimmicks. To survive as a program, to thrive, we need incoming students who want to become engineers. If they know that there is a high possibility of a job in the future, that creates a huge incentive. Tell me specifically what the partnership with GINU provides. Updated information as to what these operations will look like in the future and what they look like now. And the opportunity of internships and co-ops with their industry so that our students get prepared for their job market. Or well, how important is Trona to the region here? And let's start by saying that we have the largest deposits in the world. For Wyoming, that means a significant job market for people who might have been somewhere else and might be retrained. So it's not just engineers. There are technical people at the local colleges that might be trained in that area. So we complete that value change in the job market, I believe. So our invisible ingredient, soda ash, is big business for Wyoming. Here in the capital, Cheyenne, Governor Mark Gordon calls it an essential part of the economy and has praised its state-of-the-art industrial, labor, and environmental standards. With four companies competing in the basin, Trona has become the state's largest foreign export, supporting thousands of jobs. Next, I'm off to Turkey to discover the new and innovative ways that natural soda ash will be produced in the future. <laughs> 